Hey everybody, it's Steve with Sky194 and I appreciate you taking the time to visit and check out my video. And we're here at Laguna Seca. Haven't been here in a while. Um, my son actually asked for a setup here for the Lamborghini Huracan. So he likes the Huracan, the new Huracan and Laguna Seca, uh, of course I've said this a long time ago in other videos, is his, fa his favorite track. I, I don't really care for it that much, but he loves this place, so that's good. Um, so I went ahead and did a setup and, um, did a lot more laps than I thought I was going to, but just wanted to try some different angles and trying to, you know, the Evo 2, trying to get something that was good, you know, as far as being driver friendly, but still had some good speed, good brakes here. You know, it's, Laguna's not, I guess, not one of the most complicated places, but I mean, you got to be, very, you know, pretty pinpoint because they miss those sausages and still carry the speed and... You gotta have good brakes for certain, you know, braking zones. You know, pretty strong in the brakes. So it's just a few things that you really want the car to do good, uh, to react, you know, really good. And when you turn it, it's got to react right away. You can't, you can't wait for it. So um, I try to kind of tune it in that way, and of course, uh, work on the suspension to get it to handle some of the bumps as best I could. So let's do a lap. Of course, it'll be a quick lap. And this is a new Grasser uh, racing, li one of the new liveries. Um, there's this one, and they, there's two of them, this one and another one. So I don't think I ever sh uh, uh, had it on a video, so I figured I would go ahead and just use this one. I've always like the Grasser racing Lamborghinis, at least the older ones. Very uh, friendly to drive around here, so again, the, the Huracan fits Laguna pretty good. This course is the hardest section for me right here. So you really gotta have the car on its nose right there or it'll always run in the dirt. Really the corkscrew isn't that difficult to me. Just using all the curbing. Good late apex here in the last corner to get the drive down the straightaway. And that was a 123.12. And that was starting off with 55 liters, and that was after a while. So, I mean, it was staying strong. Um, real happy with the pace it had it felt like it could pretty much do that for a long time um again you know really not a lot of weak points in it uh as far as the balance i think the balance is very neutral and uh felt really good so let's go over the setup got 25 8 left front 25 4 left rear 25 right front 24 8 right rear the toe's a negative 0.2 on the front with the camber at negative 3.8 and the caster at 10.2. And the toe on the rear is a positive 0.2 with the camber at negative 2.8. Again, trying to get the car um, to react as soon as you turn the wheel. So that's the idea of it without having to jack the car right height to the moon. Um, because again, you know, when you turn the wheel, you just don't want to have to turn it that much for a reaction. You want the car to react pretty fast. Now, I did, I rather have put less negative camber in here, and I think that would have helped the the car react faster. And I kind of like that, but to be honest, I think it's a little faster with the more negative camber. After I tried both ways, um, it felt like it had a little bit more... Uh, you could carry more corner speed with the, you know, with the more negative camber here. So again, that's why I kind of have a little bit more toe on here, almost kind of like an older setup, but it ran a little bit more negative toe to kind of get the car to turn in quicker. So at least that's the idea. So again, uh, that's the idea behind that. Electronics, I have three, four, three, and five. Now again, 
the TC2 here on five. You can go back to four or three or whatever you like. It's just, especially for the first two, three laps, you know, the car is a little bit oversteery. So again, you know, coming off the corners. So again, you, you just, you know, it kind of helps it without getting it too crazy. Um, again, you know, all these setups, all my setups, I mean, whether it's a Lamborghini, the Ferrari, the Porsche, whatever, um, you know, always when the tires are coming up to pressure, you don't have as much, you know, you're going to slide around a little bit. You're not going to be able to, you know, break where you need to break. You know, everything's got to be backed up a little bit until you start getting the pressures up where they need to be in the heat and the tires. Fuel, of course, I had 55 liters, number one brake pad. Wear on the tires was very good. Uh, Any roll bars for brake bias is 59. You can go to 58 with no problem. Steering is all the way down. Springs on the front are 190,000 with a bump stop rate of 600 and a bump stop range of 3. And on the rear, the springs are 154,000 with a bump stop rate of 90, with bump stop rate of 900 <laughs> and a bump stop range of 20. So again, um, I would have liked to maybe tried a little bit more experiments with the bump stop rates and ranges. But, you know, I just, it felt really good here. So, I mean, I'm sure there's some more time in it right and out of that. Any roll bars four and the preload on the diff is 70. Now, I, again, I tried some different settings there, different spring settings. Um, you can go down one click here on the springs. You know, it you know it doesn't hurt it, but I think I liked it a little. You could be a little bit more precise with the stiffer springs. And here, precise is definitely worth a little bit because you, you just you got to nail those points and. The closer you can come to the sausages, the better you are, but you don't want to hit them. So, again, it's, it's being precise is definitely important. Um, that's about it here. Shocks, 21, 10, 15, and 20 on the front. That should be 20. There we go. 21, 10, 15, and 20, and 8, 3, 12, and 6. So, again, you know, made a few adjustments all along the way. I've always, you know, a couple clicks here, a couple clicks there. Just trying to dial it in every time, trying to get a little bit closer. So it should be pretty good. Arrow got 55 in the front, 64 in the rear with a 10 wing, and a 4 and a 3 in the brake ducts. And the front arrow variation is a positive 0.8. So here again, you know, I really don't want to jack this up really much any more really than what it is. Because it's going to come up as the fuel comes out. So as you see, it comes up to 65. It only comes up one. So it's not bad. So that's not terrible. Only coming up one. But um, I still rather, you know, if you had a full tank, it'd probably come up two or three. So, again, I, I'd rather just leave it where it's at. That's enough ride height to me. Um, but it really needs the ride height for it to react on the turn-in. Uh, corner entry here is critical to hit, the, hit your marks and hit the spots um, to carry the momentum and the corner speed through and not hit the sausages, but not run wide and then end up running off into the dirt coming off the corner. So again, it's really critical with that. And of course you need the rear end. You don't want to have to do too much corrections because otherwise you're going to catch it, but you're going to go run in the dirt and all that other stuff. So again, that's why I run 10, a 10 wing on the Lamborghini is pretty much to me, max. Uh, the only reason you'd have to probably run more, um, I think I did at Valencia, but you could go down to 10 even there. But, uh, you know, really, the only time probably running max wing is probably in the rain. I, I mean, I would probably, here in the rain, I would probably lift this up one, uh, nose up in the front one, and max the wing out in the rain. That's about all I would do. If it was a, just a rain event, that was it. Um, if it was just a little bit of rain or something, but it was going to be drier rain, I would leave it just the way it is. So, again... You know, different things you can do. And, of course, obviously, with the electronics, you can do a lot of things here. Obviously, with the map, you can do go up to map 5, and that will bring the you know pull the car in with the engine braking. Or you can go to map 1 if uh, you think it's a little bit too much, too rotate, you know, rotating too much for you. So, either way, it will do, you know, you can tune it in the way you like it. Same thing with the TC1 and TC2. So, again, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you like it. Um... And I hope, you know, you can run some good lap times with it. So, again, I'll leave a link to this, of course, in the description. And I'll leave a link to this in my Discord. So, again, I'll have a Discord link also in my description. And a PayPal link if you want to help support the channel that way. I really appreciate it. It does help with a lot of little odds and ends and things that I do. 
um, here with the channel, um, and I would appreciate it. But again, liking and subscribing is a big support too, and I want to thank everybody for doing that and sharing it and just getting it out there. I appreciate it. That's huge. Um, so again, I sure hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you come back and visit again really soon. Y'all take care. See you.